Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to the first 2020 edition 2020. of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan, and what a great way to close out 2019. Impressive wins over UCLA and Alabama A&M, plus really a heartbreaking loss against Indiana. God, heartbreaking against Indiana. I'm so proud of our group. We came back from 17 down, went up five, but we just couldn't finish. But as you said, Jack, I love how we played and how we've been playing on our home court the wins against UCLA and Alabama A&M. And when we come back, we will return here to Purcell Pavilion for all the highlights of the 50th meeting between Notre Dame and UCLA. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM. There are so many reasons why the UCLA game was important. Probably the biggest one, with three losses already to Power 5 teams and only three non-conference games left, you needed to win the game. Yeah, we, we needed a win against a Power 5 team. And, you know, the UCLA-Notre Dame matchup just wakes a lot of our fans up. And, and, you know, I heard from more of our former players that used to play the game annually. Obviously, when we joined the league, the flexibility change to schedule them all the time. But it is a great matchup for us, and I thought we really defended well to get a win against a physical UCLA team. Their keys were their big guys inside. Cody Riley, Jalen Hill, you held them to a combined nine points on three of 16 shooting. We really did a good job helping our big guys with our guards coming down and double teaming and crowding and digging in the post, as we like to call it. And, and I thought our perimeter guys really carried over what we wanted to do and helped our big guys and jammed it up. We were gonna give up some threes. They were not the greatest shooting team and, and couldn't get on a roll. Uh, but as you mentioned earlier, we got into a pretty good offensive rhythm and we have been doing that on this court. For the second game in a row, you hit threes. Eight in the first half, seven in the second half, with five different guys hitting threes. Yeah, we we um, were moving the ball at a high level and, and I think we're settling in to where our shots are coming and how we're playing off of each other. UCLA and, and Mick Cronin has always played kind of a matchup zone. And I thought we did a good job finding the holes of the zone and then stepping up and making open shots. Good starts are important. TJ Gibbs got you off to a good start. Back to back threes as you took an 8-5 lead. And he has been the guy to jumpstart us on this court, you know, in most of our games. But he comes out ready. I like the fact that he's settling down and hunting his jump shot and not turning it down. Of course, we've got guys that really pass it well and find him in Rex and Prentice. Coming off the bench again in this game, Dane Goodwin. After UCLA cut your lead to one, Dane hit three straight threes to help you build a nine-point lead. Just, uh, I feel the light bulb is on for Dane Goodwin as a college basketball player. We saw flashes last year when we threw him to the Wolves as a freshman, but now he is starting to feel it and be aggressive and play with that edge that I think he's always had. Now the guy who took over in the second half was Prentice Hub. He scored 17 of his game high 20 in the second half and dished out three of his six assists. And, and, and he is a guy that can go off at any time. You know, I think he's a very capable shooter and his numbers say that. Um, we're trying to get him to get into the lane a little bit more, to get in there and make some plays at 15, 18 feet. And um, again though, when he's got his feet set outside the arc for a good shot, we want him to take it. He's not afraid. He's played in a lot of big games. And again, another one of those sophomores like Dane that we need to keep getting better. Uh, in league play. Also big in the second half scoring wise, maybe because he was working so hard on D, especially in the first half, was John Mooney. Scored 12 of his 14 points in the second half, 10 of his 15 rebounds in the second half, his eighth double-double of the year. Well, the machine-like performances of John Mooney he, we're just getting numb to him. It just gets up and gets a double-double. But, you know, I think as the senior and the captain and a key guy, he sensed I've got to do a little bit more offensively. He's always on the backboard and rebounding, but I think he sensed this team really needed him. So you beat UCLA 75-61. What a great way to celebrate your 800th game as a collegiate head coach. You know, I, I remember my first college game, Washington College, driving uh, to the Bob Carpenter Center. It, it, it is amazing. That's a lot of pregame meals and walkthroughs and scouting reports. I'm blessed that I've been in it that long, but also a good way to go into exam week on a positive note. When we come back, we will take you down to Indianapolis for Notre Dame's Crossroad Classic Showdown with Indiana. But first, 
As we go to break, here's a behind the scenes look at the 50th meeting between Notre Dame and UCLA. Let's get stops so you get out and go yeah. and run and distort them and move it. And that ball wasn't sticking on Tuesday. Let's not let it stick today. Yeah, shoot that yeah. thing, fellas. Confidence. <laughs> to Gibbs, long three, right side, got it! Yeah, the way that TJ Gibbs is shooting the ball right now, it's just, it's a beautiful shot to watch. Shovels it to Hub, behind the back to Goodwin, three-pointer on the way, got it! What a beautiful play! Moody, turn around, follow it, that's what they wanted to do, establish John Moody. Hub, step back, top of the key, three is good, he is feeling it. the three, got it. and that's just a beautiful job there from Hope. Novodoloshevsky drives into the lane for the nice finger roll into the hoop, wide open, three, right side, got it. The Irish are in fuego. Great court vision by Moody, that is going to do it. The Irish 75, UCLA 61. Before we get into the IU game, we always have to touch on exam week because academics are so important here and challenging here, and your guys did really well. Jack, I'm so proud of our guys. We had a team GPA of over 3.0, and that says a lot about the young men that we have. There is a stress and intense period during that, and they delivered and got it done. But then you got to flip the script real quick and get ready for a really good Indiana team in not a neutral atmosphere, more of a road atmosphere. But you've always played well down there. The problem is you often haven't finished well, but in this game, you didn't start well. We did not. And I, the thing that I was disappointed about, you know, they were an inside beat you up kind of group like UCLA. And we had a similar preparation, but we could not hold them off the backboard and getting into our lane. And we were digging out of a hole the whole game. Um, now, you know, you look up there and you're down 17, you're thinking it's gonna be an ugly night and a long ride back. It was still a long ride back. And I give our guys credit for getting into an offensive rhythm and I think we had nine out of 10 defensive stops in one stretch. When you go up five or three minutes, you gotta finish that one. And we just couldn't finish it. You gotta give IU credit, some kids made some big shots. So a, a disappointing one because you came back and you had a you were in a position to win the game. Down 11 at halftime, as you said, down 17 early in the second half. It could have been more, but you battled defensively throughout the first half. Even though you fell behind 9-1, you came back to cut the lead to 17-16, and the guys who did most of that work were Mooney and Durham, who scored 13 of your 16 points. Yeah, the two, they, they've been really good together. I, I And I think Johnny's Johnny. I really think Juwan Durham is getting better and more confident, and he's healthier, and is such a key for us in January. and. February and March, but uh, there knows we rode the big guys as hard as we could just to stay in the game in the first half. So they kept you in the game in the first half, and then the thing that changed in the second half was Dane Goodwin went off. He scored all of his 15 points in the second half. Yeah, he gets on those runs, and he gets going, and we found him. We were able to get stops and get out in transition. We had a hard time playing against their set defense. They're a very good half-court defensive team, and, and in the first half, all we did was play against a, ha a, a set defense and couldn't get much. But we got into some transition, we got scoring, we got into a flow, and you know, all of a sudden you're up five. You stunned the Indiana crowd. It yeah. was a 32-10 run, a good one three gave you the lead, and as you said, you had a five-point lead with 342 left, and you seemed to have all the momentum. We, we had all the momentum, we're getting the loose balls. Uh, they called a walk on Johnny in the post up five. I, I beg to differ on that, but uh, anyways, that kind of changed things. And then Indiana made some big shots when they had to. We felt that we still had to jam it inside and give up more of a three instead of a dunk or a layup, and they made some. Nobody can question your team's toughness. TJ turns his ankle in the first half. You tape it up, he goes back in. Rex tweaks a groin in the second half. He was out for what, 35 seconds? The guys left it all on the floor. No, we, we really battled. It's why I just felt so bad for him driving back up north because we fought, we put ourselves in position. You know, we do have fighters and battlers and, and we, you know, you think about the Toledo game here. You think about the Boston College game here when you were dead, the Indian. We have a lot of good stuff there. We just gotta be better at finishing, especially away from our building. So your team went 
home for Christmas then. The turkey and ham didn't taste quite as good as it might have otherwise. But then you got back on the 26th, went right back to work to prepare for the final non-conference game of the season on this floor against Alabama a and All those highlights are coming up right after this. This is what I'm going to keep coming back to. That, that's us. Believe in that and invest in that. And then we began this segment for the folks at home by showing the run it back feature for the Alabama A&M game. And in that feature, it showed you after the game talking to your team about why they win when they play well. And it's because you believe the team is smarter, tougher, and more together than the opposition when they win. You know, I, 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 I thought that was a theme that we really wanted to hang our hat on. Um, moving into league play, getting into 18 league games. You know, we've got really smart guys and our basketball IQ is high. You don't lead the nation in assist to turnover by a wide margin unless you really know how to play. I think we have tough guys. And I would say less the, the, the point of view of physical, but mental and a resilient group. They've taken a lot of punches and, and have gotten back up off the mat. And then to be even more together than we have been through the preseason, the non-league schedule. Those are three things we're gonna keep coming back to and those are our themes as we enter 18 league games of ACC play. Well, hopefully you can get off to as good a start in those games as you did against Alabama a and You jumped out 6 nothing and built that to 18 points at halftime. Yeah, I thought we were in a very matter-of-fact flow. Again, I like how we're playing offensively here. Last year, we couldn't find an offensive rhythm here, but we're shooting it well here. We're confident here. We're moving the ball here. I like how we're scoring here. Love to package some of that and take it on the road to Syracuse today. You're really starting to shoot it on this floor, and that's important because you've got nine home games left. If you could protect it and steal a couple, that's going to mean you're right in the thick of things. You hit 13 threes in this game, which means you've hit 48 three-point shots in your last three games. You know, I just felt the law of averages were going to kick in. I've watched these kids practice, you know, for two years, and we have guys that can step up and make open shots. I think there was some adjustment with this arc being out further, but again, because we pass it so well, we usually always get a pretty good shot, and we're making a better clip of them. But again, right now, home identity here and flowing a little bit, we feel good about it. Now we got to get on the road and pick off one or two or John, three. Or four <laughs> or, or four, five. Yes, yes. John Mooney, 16 points, 18 rebounds, 10th double-double of the season. We expect this from John. Is it fair that we do? Yeah, it, it, it's um, maybe the most underappreciated double-double machine in the history of college basketball, maybe in our history, because he just does it with no flair or no ego or no look at me, look at me, but to get 18 rebounds and play 33 minutes is just amazing what he does on the backboard for us. And, um, and and as I said this year, what I've been proud of, I've been proud of the leader and the voice he's become. He's never gonna be a real boisterous vocal guy, but he, he is a captain and he's been good at setting the tone and helping those sophomores. So a true team victory for your team, ninth of the season, 82-56 over the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M. And your praise of John Mooney is a perfect segue to this week's Vivid Seats Performance of the Week. There were lots of performances for us to choose from in these three games, but we cannot ignore John Mooney. Mr. Consistency, he averaged 15 points and 14 rebounds in Notre Dame's last three games while recording a double-double in every one. He does everything you ask him to do, and we ask him to do, like, take us to break with some more highlights, John. <laughs> Oh, 
Mike, the fans have not been able to see it yet, but those of us who get to go to practice have seen the impact that your Stanford transfer, Cormac Ryan, is already having both on the floor in practice and on the sidelines in games. You have to stay deep. Find him. That's all you. You forgot about my boy T. Don't forget about my boy T. Don't forget about him. Tell me, yo, TJ's fit right now is clean. Work on that. Baby food. Baby food. Baby food. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. His fit is clean, though. The all white and gold. I'm about to sub myself in. So theoretically, if I suited up and checked into the game or whatever. Oh, that's a travel. Oh my lord, that's steps. How many steps? How many steps? A lot of steps. I found him. I found him. I see you. Oh. Oh. that bucket. You got to count that bucket. You must count the bucket. Ooh, get up, get up, get up, get up. Ah! Oh, beep, beep. Nine, eight, seven, six, beep. We know that. Where is she going? Where is she going? That's what I'm talking about. Carmack already looks like a guy who has coaching in his future. Oh, he has got a great feel for the game. I just love his personality and, and what a great investment. Our fans are going to be so excited to see him play. He is a great guard out of the mold of a Vastoria and a Chris Quinn. I'm excited to coach him starting next season. All right, don't go anywhere because this week's TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Brace coming up right after this. It's time now for this week's The Experts at TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Bray. This week's question comes from Ray Feldman of Annapolis, Maryland. Coach, what's one thing you know about this team after 13 games that you didn't know in early October? You know that um, as a group, we're a great passing team. I thought I had a couple good passers. But I have been so impressed with how, especially our big guys, John Mooney and Jawan Durham, have passed the basketball. Thus, we lead the nation in assist to turnover. We lead the nation in least amount of turnovers. And you're going to need that kind of ball handling and protection as you start the full ACC grind this week with two tough road games at Syracuse on Saturday at North Carolina State on Wednesday. Well, here comes the day-to-day -day grind of the next three months. And two years ago, we had a great win in the Carrier Dome and maybe the ugliest game in the history of college right. basketball. Uh, but we'll take it, and um, we'll have to be good against the zone. Um, this Syracuse team is a three-point shooting team. We've not seen Syracuse teams that have a number of guys firing it from three, but that's how they play. And NC State scoring 81 points per game. They have five guys in double figures. And I think PNC Arena is one of the best kept secrets in all of college basketball. I think it's right there on a the line with the other two teams in the triangle. Just as hard to play there as it is at Duke and North Carolina. I agree with you. They get it going. They get their students uh, strategically situated around that lower bowl. And, and they are scoring the ball. We play three out of the gate. And you had Louisville. Three great offensive teams right out of the gate in ACC play. And coach, we will have all the highlights of two of the three games you mentioned, the games at Syracuse and at NC State on the next edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball. You ready for the grind to begin? I'm ready. I love my team. Let's head to the Carrier Dome. I'm glad you're enthusiastic because <laughs> you have no <laughs> choice. True. It is going to be a wild ride, folks. We thank you for being with us throughout the season so far, and we'll see you here again next week. For Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM.